Hello, it is I, Bjorn, here we're back with another movie mashups. Even though we still have to wait a long time until Halloween is around, today for this episode specifically, we have two superhero horror films. One of which that I only watched because of the ironic hype built around it, and another one which I didn't even know had horror elements. Neither films are scary though. Both reviews are going to feature spoilers, so if you haven't watched these films yet, then make sure to check them out before you come back to this video. And also, do keep in mind that this is my personal opinion. Now, without any further explanation or elaboration, let us begin. Morbius was one of the films I've ever watched. I think I'm one of the six people who thinks that Morbius isn't that terrible. Though not one to associate with a vampire, I thought the special effects were pretty neat and they gave the film its own distinct feeling. That's kind of the only thing this film nails perfectly. Despite being a superhero movie, the action sequences were kind of forgettable, and the only one that I really liked was when Morbius attacked those mercenaries on the ship. The plot on paper could have really worked, but the problem stems mainly from its characters. Jared Leto did a good job playing as Michael Morbius, and overall I quite like the main character. Unfortunately, once he got his powers, we just get a big fat exposition dump of him discovering said powers. The two FBI agents I actually quite liked as they bounced each other off very well, but ultimately they're just here to be the cops trying to catch Morbius, and that's literally all they're here to do, nothing else. Morality Pet's character. I feel really bad for Milo as he's the only character I really connected with through the entire film, despite being the main antagonist. Like, I get why he's so bitter. Morbius doesn't give him a cure for fear that it will be more of a curse, and Milo's angry about that. I understand that perfectly, and despite having the same powers as Morbius, which I find honestly very lazy, he easily have the most development out of any character in the film compared to Morbius who doesn't really have much of a good reason why he's an anti-hero, aside from losing his best friend, in that case Milo, and his love interest. And speaking of said love interest, she was the worst character in the entire film, I just found it really bland, and a rock has more personality than she does. The dialogue's quality is really inconsistent, it goes from actually pretty good to being laughable at best. Like, was it really necessary for Morbius to say that he's Venom when he's actually not just to connect the two universes together? Pathetic. Like the first Venom film, Morbius has terrible pacing issues. The film has a very slow start, but then suddenly it just ends. Seeing Michael Kenton play as the Vulture again made me like the post credit scenes at first, but the more I think about it, the more they were a massive plot hole to not only this film, but also the MCU as a whole. Despite the black that I'm giving this film, I do not hate Morbius. It has flashes of really cool ideas, and the performances were solid at least, but it was well shot at least and it had decent music, so I'll give it a two and a half stars. I only really recommend this film to you guys if you want to see a movie try to be different from a superhero genre, or if you're like me who want to see Milo dancing. Up next we got Dr. Dre in the Multiverse of Swagness. It's a Marvel movie but it isn't Black Widow, so I guess it's good. Easily my least favourite part about the film has to be the Illuminati. As a person who grew up with the Illuminati being the most funniest thing ever, I just burst out laughing when Mordu told Doctor Strange that they're going to take him to the courts of the Illuminati. Plus, most of the members of said organization were just references to previous Marvel media. And plus, they're idiots too. And the smartest man alive, Reed Richards of the Fantastic Four. <laughs> Destroy you with one whisper from his mouth. What, now? what a fantastic four never gets any good movies. But enough about my little Illuminati rant. Let's talk about the film itself. Despite not taking full advantage, the concept behind this movie is amazing. It's easily one of the most fascinating and unique stories from the MCU thus far. Although you have to watch WandaVision if you are to get a motivation, 
Having Wanda being the main antagonist of the film was a much better idea than just having another enemy with similar powers. She's a perfect choice as well because her motivations also fits very well with the context of the film. And like any other Marvel film, the action sequences are amazing. And as an added bonus, they're some of the most creative fight scenes in the entire MCU. In one particular scene, Doctor Strange uses music notes to overpower his opponent. And while not particularly scary due to its generous 12 rating, the horror elements do leave quite a shock. And it only enhances the quality and enjoyment of the film. I'll give this film a 4 out of 5, with simply less wasted potential and simply more visits to different parts of the multiverse, this would have been one of the best Marvel films I've ever seen, but as it stands, it's a whole lot of fun. Unfortunately, this wraps up this video. But are there any movies and cinemas at the moment that you recommend me? And do you agree or disagree? I'm open to any opinions. Like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next video.